back in, I believe, was it season two? Correct me if I'm wrong. Season season two that we did uh, Smooth Wall. And our Smooth Wall has been going flawlessly for the last two years. I came across a basically Smooth Wall on crack product that you guys might like. Uh, it's called PF Sense. And basically, it's built on free BSD. And it's a fork of the MonoWall project. Now, some of you use MonoWall, some of you don't. Uh, you can find out more about that, I believe, at monowall.org. Uh, you can go to pfsense.com to actually download a live, live CD installer uh, or an embedded installer. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to set up PFSense. That's going to be this episode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to then go on and show you some of the more advanced stuff like OpenVPN and you know VPN site to sites so on and so forth in future episodes. So let's dive in. What we're going to do is we're going to start our computer with the live CD that we've burned. Yes, I'm aware that I need to install the VMware tools. And what we're going to do is it's going to start up and we have the option to install or just run PFSense uh, from the live CD installation. Now, the nice thing about that is before you make any changes to an existing installation of say our smooth wall, you can actually verify that the setup is going to work with your hardware, that it's going to work with you know your network infrastructure, uh, blah, 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 blah. So what it's doing now is it's actually loading the live CD and it's going to start up here. And there's there's a two-step process. First, we're going to set up in the, uh, the shell. And then we're actually going to log in to PFSense from a, another computer to set up the wizard. Uh, so right now it's going to ask us if we want to set up VLANs. We have absolutely no purpose for VLANs here in our infrastructure. So we're going to go ahead and say no. Now what we're going to do is because I am in a VM, I actually have to disconnect our network adapters uh, because what it's going to do is it's actually going to auto detect uh, for those of you who don't know your network interface names. I do, but for the sake of showing you, let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go ahead and select A, and it's going to ask us to connect the LAN interface. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect the LAN interface, which on ours is a virtual machine uh, interface. So we're going to come back over here to PFSense, hit enter, and EM0 is changed to link state up. So that's our LAN interface. We're going to come back and say A. Now it's going to ask us for the WAN interface. So we're going to connect the WAN interface. Come back into PFSense and hit enter and EM1 link state changed to up. So now you have the option to set an orange interface. Uh, we don't need an orange interface, so we're going to hit enter. And it's going to ask you to confirm your interface selection, EM0 being the LAN and EM1 being your WAN. Yes, we would like to proceed. So now it's actually done with its initial configuration and it's going to actually start PFSense to the point where we can actually log into the web interface. Come on, come on, there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over and in another machine we're going to open the internet. Now for the sake of testing and showing you guys I've already set up a static IP. The address for the local interface is defaulted to a 192.168.1 network. So I've already got, I think, if I come down here, did I get another address? No, OK. So right here, we're going to go to 192.168.1.1. And we're going to enter in the password admin, and, or the username admin, and the password is pfsense by default. So here, it's going to launch the setup wizard for pfsense. Yes, you're going to guide me through the process. You set your host name, your domain, your primary DNS server. I, myself, when I'm testing things, like to use a DNS server external of my local DNS server just so that I know I have connectivity. So we're going to enter 4.2.2.2. Uh, very easy to remember, 4.2.2.2. Uh, if you ever need to ping anything, that's what I suggest you use because it's always up. So we're going to select our time zone and our uh, server for time. We're going to set a static here because we're actually plugged into our existing internal network. So we're going to set a static address and it's going to be 
10.10.0.134. Now, you guys would probably use your cable modems, static or DHCP information. Uh, our subnet is a 24, and our gateway is 10.10.0.1. Come down here. Now, these two settings down here block Bogon networks and block RFC 1918 networks. It's key if you're going to use PFSense in a router behind a router configuration because you need to uncheck the 1918 because otherwise it won't route correctly. Let's click next and we're good with our LAN IP being 192.168.1. We're going to enter a password of hack5 because we're very insecure like that and we're going to reload the interface. Admin with a new password of hack5. You come over here and we are going to verify via the PFSense uh, interface to see if we actually have connectivity or not. So let's go ahead and see that. Ping host is option number seven and google.com. And would you look at that? We've actually got connectivity within, what was that, five minutes? It's very simple to set up. What I'm going to go into later are some of the more advanced options of IPsec VPN, OpenVPN, a lot of the services, virtual IP support, things of that nature. Uh, it's a very, very powerful platform for running a router. If you're you know, using a Linksys now and you've got a, a machine laying around your house, I highly suggest you guys check out PFSense. It's got some great graphing with RRD tools or RRD graphs and just some really nice applications and platforms that really aren't available to you Linksys users unless you're running uh, something like OpenWRT.